Now, we're also going to allude as we go along to popular understandings and controversies about the Civil War era. Uh, Robert E. Lee, the great Confederate general, supposedly said, and by the way, you all know this, but, um, you know, as Abraham Lincoln said, don't believe everything you find on the Internet. <laughs> you know, it, 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 there's a lot of quotations which are not correct out there. So maybe Robert E. Lee said that. If he didn't say this, he should have said it. It is well that war is so terrible, for otherwise we should grow too fond of it. Okay? But historians and the general public are very fond of the Civil War. By the end of the, in an article published by Drew Faust, currently the president of some university in Cambridge, Mass., whose name I forget, um, <laughs> but was a significant historian, and still is, I mean, but that was her job before that. Uh, she wrote an article which pointed out that by the end of the 20th century, something like 60,000 volumes, books, of one kind or another had appeared on the American Civil War. That is more than the number of days <laughs> since the Civil War. Since the Civil War, there's more than one book per day published in 150 years. On, so. Somebody is doing, has some reason for doing that. There's money in the Civil War. Um, I brought along a few clippings to show you this. Here's an article from the Wall Street Journal. Um, no, I mean, in the Washington Post about a Civil War reenactment. You know, people do this. They get dressed up in Civil War uniforms and they go out and reenact battles. Uh, but the corporate sponsors, the corporations are going into this now. Uh, as... Um, here, the sponsors hope a marketing boost. Why are they out there? First and foremost, says Brent Diamond, um, we're trying to extend our brand into the Civil War category. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but, you know, so they, they have a good reason there. All right, uh, you can get a Civil War-themed Visa credit card with, <laughs> yeah, with pictures of different battles on it. I get these things in the mail. You can... <laughs> You can explore the war between the states steamboat style on a Mississippi River cruise with lectures about the Civil War and stop off in battlefields. Um, there was a Broadway musical called The Civil War. I was the historical advisor. I was. It was a total flop. <laughs> the critics denounced the music, the staging, but nobody said it was historically inaccurate. So. <laughs> the Civil War is evoked, uh, invoked for all sorts of weird analogies. Here's one that I like from an Irish newspaper online. Um, you see this headline? Bono, you know, you know Bono. The, always good. Bono compared to Abraham Lincoln as a great world leader. <laughs> Why? Well, Bono, like Abraham Lincoln, has not let himself become isolated in an elite atmosphere. Uh, by the way, Bono hangs around with elites a lot, as far as I can see. But anyway, um, all right, he's used his knowledge and his music to light the way. So he's exactly like Abraham Lincoln. Um, um, but... If, 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 if slavery, uh, uh, Senator Rand Paul, you might remember, has compared... Obamacare, the health plan with slavery, it's a form of slavery. So slavery is kind of evoked as a sort of all-purpose analogy to something you don't, you don't like. Um, the New York Times in the last few days has had four articles directly related to the Civil War. One a few days ago on the front page was a controversy over erecting a monument to Union soldiers, many of them black, at Olu Tree, Florida, which was the site of a Civil War battle. There's a state park there which now only has monuments to Confederate soldiers who died there. And the state wants to put up a monument to the Union soldiers who died there, and a lot of people don't want that, apparently, in Olu Tree. Um, there was a long review of an exhibit which opened last week at the Brooklyn Historical Society, well worth seeing, by the way, um, on... Um, at the history of abolitionism in Brooklyn, the anti-slavery, because Brooklyn had a lot of slavery in the colonial era. Um, 
as I say, if you happen to be in Brooklyn, stop in at the Brooklyn Historical Society. Then, of course, 12 Years a Slave, the movie, was nominated for nine Academy Awards. We know that. As you will hear a number of times, I'm not particularly a fan of Hollywood history, but this is pretty good as that genre goes. It's certainly a step up from the pernicious lies that Hollywood has portrayed, uh, has conveyed about slavery over the last hundred years, starting with Birth of a Nation, Gone with the Wind, uh, et cetera, et cetera. This is more real, let's put it that way. Millions of people visit Civil War battlefield parks every day, um, uh, every year, I should say. Um, I was an advisor, I'll talk about this down the road, to Get at Gettysburg, where they revamped the visitor center a few years ago. And uh, we met with a lot of visitors and see what they want. The, the one that stuck in my mind was a woman who asked us, um, how come all these Civil War battles took place in national parks? <laughs> uh, People debate the legacy of the Civil War. They debate, as you know, whether the Confederate flag should be flown publicly. They debate Confederate mascots. The University of Mississippi, Ole Miss in Oxford, Mississippi, not a, a few years ago ended the waving of Confederate flags at sporting events, and they abandoned Colonel Reb as the name of their mascot, who leads cheers at... Um, football games. A guy dressed up as a Confederate soldier used to do that. Now they have a new mascot called, they had a vote of the undergraduates and they voted for Rebel Black Bear. Rebel Black Bear beat out in a campus vote Rebel Land Shark <laughs> and, and Hotty Toddy, whoever that or whatever that is. Anyway, public schools in the South have been ch sometimes changing their names, named after Confederate figures. I had a call a couple of weeks ago by a reporter from a reporter in Florida uh, to ask my opinion about a school district in Florida which voted to change the name of a public school named after Nathan Bedford Forrest, a homicidal killer who I don't think is a proper source of emulation for students, but then the school board finally decided that. Forrest was the Confederate general who commanded, first of all, he was a major slave trader before the Civil War. He was a Confederate general who commanded the troops that massacred black soldiers after they surrendered at Fort Pillow. We will talk about that down the road. And later became a significant leader of the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, but there's a lot of opposition to changing the name of that school. Um, the Civil War is still imprinted on our politics, although the parties are reversed now. If you look at the election map of, eight, of um, 2012 and the election map of 1860, they're not all that dissimilar, except now the Republicans are the party of the South, whereas before they were the party of the North, and Obama swept almost all the states that Lincoln had carried, with the exception of uh, Indiana. There's a few little differences. Virginia went for Obama, but the basic north-south divide is still imprinted on our political map 150 years after, uh, after the Civil War. And um, Civil War symbols are used in politics. Why, why is it that, for example, uh, the Tea Party uh, at a rally a couple of months ago at the White House at the time of the government shutdown was waving Confederate flags? Why? What are they trying to say with that? Or why do their, the Tea Party's rallies often have a, uh, a banner or a placard, repeal the 14th Amendment? The 14th Amendment is from Reconstruction, and yet it's still a point of political controversy today. We'll figure out later on why they uh, are saying that. 